Well, I was making a movie in Cairo, and I was walking down the street with my bodyguard. You didn't go anywhere without your bodyguard the whole time mm-hmm. I was there. And I see this gaggle of women coming towards me, and they've got the robes on and the, the whole nine yards. And I think, well, this is it. They're coming for me now. <laughs> and they, yeah, I don't have a robe on. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and they get to me, and they just started kissing me like kissing me and kissing me and petting me and kissing me and we love you. We love you. We love you. And I was like, wow. That's incredible. Yeah. Tokyo tonight. Hello. Did I get Hi that guys. one? <laughs> was, was Jesse Plemons on the original Sabrina? I think he might have been. I don't know. I, it seems like he would have brought it up. We sat there. Oh. It's an HBO miniseries called Love and Death that we did. Oh, that's right. The yes. mini that's, yeah. right. that's what it yeah. is. Yeah. And I didn't get an award. They just put me on their website. Oh, <laughs> oh. you should have well, read. We would have. That yeah. feels like an award to me because she's such a hero of mine. Absolutely, yeah. I was like, yeah. any association with Irma Bombeck, I'm like, woo. <laughs> <laughs> right. you, I love your, your your writing is really, really great. And I didn't, I feel ashamed. I, I knew you wrote some stuff for the Huffington Post, but I did not know until uh, recently when we got you onto the show that you had carried it over to Substack, but I got to check it out. And it's just phenomenal and engaging and super fun to read. So I'm glad you're doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I'm really having a great time doing it. And it's just nice to remind ourselves that there are people that out there that read and that it is a really important form of communication. You know, I can't, I can't express the things that I express on that blog in, in the Instagram. Right. I, you know, I can put some pretty pictures up and goof around with people, but, but you know, it's, I'm 63 years old. Wow. And you look great. Yes, yeah. I you am. look amazing. Oh, I am. Is, thank you. Yeah. Not but, true at all. You know, like I, I, I keep saying to people, well, maybe this is what 63 looks like. You know? Yeah. Oh, I, mean, I hope it looks like that for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also, you know, there's a lot of things that people are thinking and feeling and wondering about and 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 exploring at this age. You, 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 it's kind of confronting and also fantastic. I just mm. please don't be afraid to get older, people, because it's just every bit of it is a joy, and it, and it does get better, and you do get happier. Yeah. I recommended it to some of my, I mean, uh, so it is one of those things that I feel like everybody needs to talk about regardless of what age they are, because even like, you know, my, my friends are, are, uh, we're, we're all in our like mid to late thirties, but I'm, Mm. I, I had a, I had a terrible time turning 30 because I thought this was, I don't know why in my head, I had like this weird timeline in my head where once I hit 30, I was done. And if I didn't do everything I wanted to, so I had like a really weird 30th like year where I was like really feeling like shit, but I couldn't figure out why. And now the same thing with like some of my friends who are turning or going to be, you know, turning 40 or whatever, but even Mm. it's just a weird thing, but it's cool to read it, to read your stuff and just read and listen to people who have experience with the annual where it's like, yeah, no, this is all, everything is just the beginning. It's going to get better. (laughs) You're not not out of the loop. I mean, 30 was my only hard birthday. Really? At really? 30, I was so mad at myself. I hadn't accomplished enough and I wasn't where I was supposed to be. And I had yep. none of the things I was supposed to do. And, you know, then I got th- to be 31 and I was like, oh, yeah, this is good. How am I this now? <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> so, like, it just took a year to get, woo, to get yeah. the program. And yeah. then 40, I was like, bring it, you know, I'm good. <laughs> and, and 50, you know, I, I, I will say 58, right, is when mm-hmm. you go, what now? <laughs> and you go and there's 60 like sitting in the corner going i see you yeah you nine soon and that is a that is a change mm-hmm. and, and it's not a not a negative one but it's kind of all the same until 58 and then you're hmm <laughs> how, how much how much of it is is do you think it like just in your head just in people's heads in general about getting older as opposed to maybe how you actually feel you know what i mean how much of it do you think is mental well i think a lot of it's mental i think a lot of it's societal 
Mm. Yeah. You know? And one of the reasons I signed with a modeling agency was because I was so pissed off. Because yeah. people keep on movies and TV shows, people are like, we're feeling that you're looking a little too attractive for the mom. Like, she's from the Midwest. And I'm no. like, there's no attractive people in the Midwest. So <laughs> no. Right. No thin ones. No thin or attractive people in the Midwest. No. Wow. And I'm just like, seriously? Come yeah. on now. That's, That's outrageous. Ridiculous. Yeah. So I was like, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm all signed with a modeling agency, so you all can just kiss my butt. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love doing things out of spite. That's so right? great. <laughs> yeah. It, it feels like, amazing. Yeah, here's me toning down it, toning it down. Yeah. What was the was was that what made you want to start your own Substack? Because I know, like you said, you used to write for Huffington Post. I used to read those articles too. What made you start writing in the first place? You know, I've always been a writer. I've always loved writing, and Huffington Post. Honestly, I know Ariana. And she was like, Bad darling, you must write for me, darling. I would love for you to write for me, darling. So I did. You yeah. know? And then she was like, Oh, you're in the front page, you know, you make people feel things best, you know. So like I was like, Okay, all right, I'll write for you. Yeah. I had a lot to say, I still do. Yeah, you do. So absolutely. You know, I enjoyed it. It just it, oh, the 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 cacophony on the airwaves and everywhere during the Trump administration was just, I just yeah. felt like I would be riding into the wind. Like it was just like, you know what I mean? Like you couldn't yeah, get, get anybody's attention or even help them think something through. Right. You know, the battle lines were drawn and people, there was like a level of hysteria around, you know? Absolutely. Well, that's, that's the thing. And we, I think we touched on it backstage a little bit too, though with, with Substack, it kind of narrows down and, and people actually like, appreciate a point of view that they're going to when you have a sub stack that you want to follow and somebody you want like it it feels like they're more readers than there are when you're just looking for clickbait like which kind of what i mean you know i still read the huffington post uh, you know when there's something interesting going on if there's an interesting writer but you're right there's this noise that you have to kind of it's hard to kind of navigate through all that shit yeah so you really it's really tough and i have you know i have between two and four thousand readers every week and mm. I've only been doing it in a couple of months. Very nice. So I feel pretty good about that. And and people are like, oh, thank God, I had the worst day. And then your article came into my inbox, you know, and I write about stuff like, please do not put ice cubes in your orchids. Can we just talk about that for a minute? Like, <laughs> stop killing your orchids. Right. It's just because it makes me crazy. Everybody's like, oh, I killed mine. Well, stop <laughs> killing it. <laughs> so, I was like, quit killing them. So, oh, you know, like that is fun to be able to give people like joy and a little bit of respite, you know, Absolutely. and also I do talk about things that people are worrying about, Yeah, you know, and I try to put it in perspective and well, it's nice to make people not feel alone. Right. And, yeah. and make people realize everybody's thinking at, at my age, you start to think, am I where I'm supposed to be? Yeah. Is this how I'm supposed to go? Mm -hmm. Should I be somewhere? Are those pod cars coming? Because it's gonna get, it's getting harder to drive at night. You know, like there's the pod oh, cars. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got some family members who have a hard time driving at night now too, and I'm hoping it's not gonna. I mean, we everybody in my family has glasses, and now it's slowly everybody who's older in my family like suddenly can't drive at night, and I'm like, I have to get to gigs. I have to drive at night. <laughs> yeah. I can't. I'm not going. To, I'm not telling anybody I can't see anything. I'm gonna be like guessing at the eye dot, lying at the eye doctor, like right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's ways they can help you now, but honestly, like this last show I did for HBO, they were like, well, we're going to need you to be there at 4.30 in the morning. And I was like, okay, here's what's not good about that. All right. <laughs> it's like, I'm not a great driver under the best of circumstances. So you do not want me out at 4.30 in the morning going, where am I going? And that lady in the phone going, turn right, turn right. And I'm just like, <laughs> She's like, no, you're right. I'm gonna put you in a hotel the night before. I was like, there we go. And nice. have a gentleman who can see pick me up. And then yes. we'll talk to the set. And oh, then that's great. Be safe. Yeah. You know, like this just not it's not it's not good for the whole planet to have me out there at four in the morning. You're like, trust me, the show does not need this kind of press. We do not need that <laughs> <laughs> no. Broderick takes out four minivans on the exactly. side. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, no. Mm -mm. You... So there, there, there are limits, but you know they keep telling us there's going to be these driverless cars, and you see a lot of them around Austin. And there's oh, these yeah. little robot food delivery things that go down the street all by themselves. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen yeah. those? I have seen yeah, them. It's crazy. They're a little it's spooky. so cool. I gotta Did... tell you the truth. 
Did you see the ones in the supermarkets, those gigantic ones that turn a corner and it looks like you're going to be arrested by like RoboCop or something <laughs> for picking, picking up the I off-brand box of cereal? Yet. Like, fuck, I'll buy Fruity Pebbles. I'm sorry. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, yeah, it, those are it. They are kind of weird, but I don't I, I want uh, I want to have a driverless car like in the worst way. But I feel like you're right. It's probably a little too like you don't want the new iPhone immediately. You want to wait, get the bugs out first and then. Right, you know, right. Yeah. You know what's funny? I was just looking at them today, right? So now mm. you pay for the upgrade to have it be totally autonomous driving. But here's the worst part. It judges you if you don't have your hands on the wheel, if you don't put your foot on the brake. It'll demote mm. your score and they will yeah. affect your insurance as a safety of driver. So I'm like, why am I paying more to have you drive me around when you're going to judge me for not for using the drive me around yeah. feature? Yeah. They just put my ass in jail because if I was <laughs> knew that it was going to drive, I'd be like, I can't believe what happened. Like, I, like, yeah. Well, I can help you both out because I already looked up a way to get around that. And you just take one of these and duct tape it to the steering wheel. So it's got a little weight on it and it feels like your hands on the wheel. Wow. Wow. That's it. I already solved. way out of it. I solved it. Yep. Now I'll know John's car when I see two bottles taped two to the bottles wheel. Two bottles of Gatorade. <laughs> like when people used to put the dummies in their passenger seats so they could yep. use the diamond lane. Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. Or like a giant stuffed animal or like an inflatable for two reasons. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. No. Oh, my God. Do you, do you feel like, so like, I know like when you're on set and you're doing that kind of stuff, you're such a, a good writer. Does it ever seep in? Does that like writing brain ever seep into a script you're doing where you're like, I could come up with a better line here. Do you mess with that? I or do you shut that. it off? I just uh, shot a movie and I just called the producer and said, look, I need to reverse some of this because the, you, you guys are hitting the funny set straight on. I want to, you know, like, so, and I just re rewrote the whole thing. Oh, that's and awesome. They were fine with that. And mm. even Hallmark is like, we let Beth say what she wants to say, <laughs> you know, because at most, you know, I improve it. Right. So they, you know, in the Hallmark, they want, they're by the book, but with me, yeah. they're like, just let her do it. Let her do it. Let her do it. Oh, that's great. So, that trust you is know, awesome. yeah, everybody kind of, you know, for me, like, I never just play my part. I shoot the movie, you know, I'm yeah. there to be, to support the movie and to make the movie better. Absolutely. And however way I can, you know. Were you always like that when you started out too? Yeah. Oh, that's great. I think because I have such a feel for narrative and story mm. that, that, you know, if something hits my eye or I'm like, wait, there's two butts in a row. I mean, I'm always super polite about it because writers don't want you changing their stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know? And I've seen actors that go, this fights. Why don't I say, you know, and like, do not do that. Right. You know? Yeah. I just say... I so I think this is so good, but I think we can get more if we do this. And they go, oh gosh, you're right. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you make it seem like it's more collaborative than it, and it is collaborative, but that because like it is. I'm not going to yeah. change it if you're not okay with that. Right. You know what I mean? I'm not going to rewrite it if you don't want me to. Yeah, I'm and not, I'm sure they appreciate that even more. I think they do. People appreciate being respected. Yeah. <laughs> That's an even better way to put it, yeah. <laughs> you know, which is a little bit, I think, in short supply in our society right now, treating people with respect. Absolutely. Did you find it like w when during COVID, when you were kind of going, well, everybody was kind of, everybody was in lockdown and everybody was getting frustrated and stuff like that, but you had your writing and stuff like that. Did you find it more creatively freeing to kind of being able to focus on one thing or were you going nuts not being able to collaborate with other actors and, and be in a room with other people? It's funny. The article that I have coming out tomorrow is about how, but it, how I've been on the road my whole life, mm -hmm. and, and as a comedian, you, you also have. Yeah. Um, and and um, like the first thing I do when I hit a town, whoever mm -hmm. picks me up, I'm like, kid, take me to the grocery store. Because <laughs> I cook in my room. I don't care what the circumstances are. <laughs> I will make food in that room. Oh, that's great. And because, you know, all these years, you just, I, I do not want to take out food or the grub hub or any of that, you know, like it's just right. not that healthy for you. No, oh, now but, I need to know. You look so good. What do you eat? Like, what is the usual, what do you grab at that grocery store when you go there? I grab a lot of vegetables. Okay. And a squeeze tube of garlic. Okay. I never go anywhere anywhere without mayonnaise it's always in my backpack it's in my purse i have mayonnaise and ketchup <laughs> on me at all times because if they serve me something hideous and i still have to eat i'm just gonna put it on it and eat it oh that's <laughs> great i'm a slender person so i have to i have to eat um 
but yeah, I, I like in my room, I'll make like a little bit of gluten-free pasta. I hate mm. that I have to do that. But yeah. I do. Um, gluten-free pasta with a bunch of vegetables piled on top of it. And, you know, it, nice. it's, it's not dietetic or anything, but no. it's fresh. Yeah. I like whole fruit plant-based. I feel like that's the best way to eat, to tell you the truth. So, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, you've totally been doing it for a while, right, Tom? Uh, listen, I'm slacking right now. I'm fat right now. <laughs> but I was doing so well. Right pre-COVID, I was in the best shape. Then mm. through COVID, we maintained it. And then just like you said, Beth, like you start going back and you're working and running around. Now you're stopping to grab a sandwich. You're stopping to grab this. And that's going to have bread. And it's going to be yeah. garbage for you. And you're like, I'm gross right now. But I feel like I need to get back. You're not gross. You're a handsome man. You're not <laughs> oh, gross. Thank you so. Well, I I don't feel comfortable where I'm at. I need to get myself back I on understand track. That. I yeah. understand that. That's yeah. a better self-talk method, what you just did right there. That's a good mm-hmm. course correction, Tom. Yes. But I what I did realize during COVID, and I have a, 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 a friend named Pat Hazel, who is also a road sky warrior. Um, mm. He used to write for Seinfeld, and he's always on the road doing something. Nice. And yeah. I was like, Pat. Are you feeling weird? Because I feel weird. Like, <laughs> wait, we were home for like six months. I was like, I don't know. I've been staring at this dog for a long time. Like, I, I, and this feels weird. Like, why aren't I in the sky? Like, where, uh, it, it was, I was really, you know, in all those years, you're like, oh, you know, you want to be on location filming, but you also desperately want to be home. Yeah. And then when I was home, I was like, oh, no, absolutely not. No, this will not do. <laughs> I have to be back out in the mix. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it it was one of those things where when it started for me too, I was like, oh, you know what? Not not that big of a deal. I'm just going to, uh, same thing. I was in really good shape. So I was like, I'm going to bike. I'm going to go outside. It's just going to be a little bit of time. Not going to be that big of a deal. And then when it got to be like the winter after all that happened, I was like, I need to get the fuck out. Yeah. Uh, I would just like pack a bag just to feel like good about Pat. Like just like, <laughs> oh, this, <laughs> this feels familiar. Maybe it'll bring some good luck. Yeah. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah, it really was. It really, that was hard for me mm. because it rhythmically, that's just not how I've been living all this time. Sure. Yeah. You know, so it was very, um, uh, it was very edifying because yeah. I always thought, wouldn't it be lovely to just have a writer's life and sit around and write and then go meet people for cocktails and, you know, <laughs> and I was like, no, actually it's not. Um, We're- were you always this regimented when it came to like uh, acting and food and stuff like that and health? Because you have, I'm not even like just saying this, like you have looked the same forever. Like <laughs> that you, you do not, you got those Paul Rudd jeans where you don't really a- ever age. You know what I mean? Like you look the same throughout history. So people you say that to-, to me all the time. People are uh, like, it's the, it's the most baffling thing for people. They're like, you never change. I'm like, yeah. well, I think I have, but <laughs> um but I appreciate people saying that. Um, uh, but I, but I have changed. I mean, age is is a real thing. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you know, I just happen to think it's kind of beautiful in a different way, mm. and not you know so scary as people think that it's going to be. At yeah. least it, it, it hasn't been scary for me. But I am um, very disciplined. That's if great. I say I'm going to put an article in your inbox every Tuesday, then that's what I'm going to do. If I say yeah. I'm going to go to the gym five days this week, then that's what I'm going to do. You know, if if there's a gym in the hotel, I don't care what crazy hour it is, I'm going to go down and do my 30 minutes. You know what I mean? Like that's exactly how I am on the road too. And it's weird for it's weird for, to be a comedian do that kind of stuff because I don't know if you've noticed some comedians we're not in the best health. So we, <laughs> we, uh, no, we not, as a, good. not as a category of people, not, not generally. <laughs> <no>. <laughs> it's so true though. Yeah. But I just did the same thing with food where like I had to change my whole thing around and it was hard, like to like really hard to do. Cause it's hard to get your brain to rewire like mm-hmm. what you're used to having. But I was like, a two sodas with every meal kind of, you know, like, and I, you know, caffeine headaches and all that stuff, but I had to like mm-hmm. wipe it out. I was like, I can't keep doing that or else I'm going to like, I was like, I'd get, I'd take naps in between gigs. Like, you know what? Because I would just be like, so filled with like the junk I was eating on the road yeah. and stuff like that. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm tired. I better sleep before the show. I'm like, who am I? <laughs> Why right? am I doing this? 30 something year old man taking a nap. I know. Well, yeah. it, you know, but but there's also so much mental pressure that comes in with what you do. Yeah, and, yeah. and and there's psychological and physical pressure with travel. 
Yes. You know, because it's always, you know, some little traveling god is up there going, <laughs> you know, like, like just like, Absolutely. The road. you know, like, they're yep. just like, there's always something that you have to contend with to, Ab- to get where you have to be. Absolutely. You're, oh God, so many road stories. It's ridiculous. But I find it interesting. I feel like, okay, so I think the two of you have very polar perspectives. Like I'm very mm-hmm. like, if I'm on a trip and they bump my flight, I'm like, nah, this was meant to happen. I'm supposed to be sitting here, people watching at this time in the airport. I think oh. John has a mild aneurysm. And I feel I like do. you might. <laughs> because, because I have a sketch, like, like I, I, um, I'll tell you a, a quick thing. I, this is, this was my fault. This is totally my fault. It was back when uh, GPS was just that brick that you used to put on your window in the car. So I had like a, I can't think of the an, um, Garmin, Tom, whatever Tom, it was, Garmin. right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Tom, Garmin, Tom or something yeah. like that. And I typed in the fastest route to Virginia. And apparently the fastest route to Virginia is by boat. And <laughs> I do not pay attention when I drive. I'm, I'm the worst with directions. So I just popped it in, put it on the dash and took <laughs> off. And then I started to realize I was heading toward the water. And I was like, none of this looks familiar at all. And then I pulled up to this little gatehouse and I was like, am I, is this not how you get to (laughs) Virginia from here? And she was like, no, you're going on a ferry. And I was like, I don't have time. I literally went, I don't have time to get on a ferry. And she she was just like, you can't turn around. You're going on a ferry. And I had to call the club and literally be like, Hey, listen, I'm on I, 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 my car's on a boat and I'm going to be a little I might be a little late. I got there just just in time. The The guy who was opening for me was literally just ending his set. I had run. There was a storm, too. So I like the boat was like rocking. <laughs> I'm just like sitting there like in my car, just like banging up against the fucking door. But yeah, it was ridiculous. That was my fault. So, yeah. So when when shit like that happens, Tom, I do have a nervous breakdown. I know. Yeah, it, it can be it can be a little confronting, especially because so many hundreds of people are counting on me. Yeah. Wherever it is that I'm going, you know. Yeah. So, you know what was cool? It was that they were in Virginia, so they were like really super sweet about it because they had like that, like that, you know, there's like even the accent was comforting to me at that point because I figured if, <laughs> you know what I mean? When I was like, oh, they might be lying to me. <laughs> and maybe when they hang up, they're like, that guy's a fucking idiot. You know what I mean? But like at least on the phone, they were like, they were like, don't worry about it. You're going to be fine. You get here when you get here, drive safe. And I was like, that's so nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were really But nice. I do like when, you know, I see these people yelling at the airline stewardess and everything. Oh, yeah. I'm just like, no, no, no. Yeah, that's terrible. This is, yeah. They, they try to get you there. If they can't get you there, it's because they can't. Right. So, you know, yeah. like at that, that, I do not ever become like stressed or aggravated or, right. or an- animated around that. But, oh, yeah. Yeah, that you don't do. I just I just internalize everything and then I, you know. Yeah, pro- and make yourself crazy. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And I'm like, how could I do this? Maybe if I get into the luggage bag. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just hold on to it. Um, but yeah, I want. So when you were younger, though, and you were just a kid, it was this your was this always this, was performing and writing was that kind of thing inside you? Was that always your passion, or did you have other interests? Always, to the nice. great dismay of my educators, it was that I was young because I was very ahead and I was skipped ahead quite a bit. So I was 15 when I was a senior in high school, oh, and wow. they all wanted me to have an academic future. Wow. And, um, and I didn't want to have an academic future. Oh, and, my God. and then my parents really wanted me to be a writer. And I was like, cause that pays so well. What are you <laughs> saying? Like, uh, but I just always had been in the arts. I'd always been drawn to it. I'd always been a writer and a, and a performer. And, you know, I love designing things. I'm a mm-hmm. chef. I love, you know, anything that I, if I can, if I'm making something, I'm happy. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be a sandwich. It could be an article. It could be a movie. If I'm yeah. creating something, if I'm in that process somehow, some way, hmm. I'm in my zone. Nice. You know? nice. What would you say your favorite sandwich is? Well, I'm not allowed to have them anymore because I'm, I'm gluten free. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Oh, cucumber sandwich cucumber right? bread together. Oh, yeah I, yeah i mean you know honestly the gluten-free thing is not so bad because they have mm. so many good substitutes now yeah. and thankfully i am a good cook so you know i have a, a little autoimmune disorder so I, I i have to knock off the dairy and the gluten mm-hmm. and so. you know i was the queen of dairy and gluten so i was like <laughs> yeah i mean the directors would come on the set and caroline would be like 
She eats like that every day. <laughs> <laughs> I have this big pile of like cheese and bread and everything. She's like, I hate her. She eats like that every day. Oh, that's <laughs> hilarious. She's just like, what? So, but yeah, no, I can't do that anymore. But I'll tell you what, when you cut that stuff out, mm. you can't eat junk. Yeah. You can't eat, you pick something up in the airport and go, well, it's just for today. Like, uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Absolutely. It's weird when you cut that kind of stuff out, how quickly, well, you know, what's cool too, is you don't start to crave it anymore. Once it gets out of your system, like you really don't like the same thing with soda for the most mm -hmm. part. Like I was like, you know what? I'm going to treat myself. It was like, the, like a week ago I was out with friends. And I was like, I'm going to treat myself. I'm going to have a soda. And I bought myself one and I didn't really drink it. Cause I was just like, Oh God, this tastes weird. Yeah. Once <laughs> like, you kind of lose the taste for it, it's not that great anymore. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. And by the way, Caroline Ray was the other person who my friends had snapped because I, uh, she was in um, my friend Carol Montgomery's Showtime special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny she Women of a Certain wonderful. Age. They were all wonderful. I thought right? the whole thing was great. Oh, it wasn't, isn't it so good? It's so, they were, I was there in the audience for it and I got to uh, meet Caroline and we took a photo together. And then literally my friends like commented, like, oh my God. <laughs> like are you kidding me and the same thing as soon as i said you were coming on they just lost their like i have a bunch of questions that they you know but like they were just like oh my god this is incredible <laughs> just like, god, this so is much fun you know it's such a privilege to have been on this show mm. that is still a worldwide phenomenon to this day yeah there was just yeah. an article in the washington post about how people can't go to sleep these days without watching the episode of sabrina the teenage witch it, did they interview my friend? My literally, I talked to one of my best friends. Her name is, uh, her, name is her name is Philomena, and she was like, "Please, that is my comfort show." Because she has like her husband uh, travels. He's a um, uh, oh my god, I cannot think of his official job. I always call him. A you could have said anything. And I could have believed you. I always, I know he's an elephant. No, but he's a. I always call him a sky cop. He's air marshal. There we go. Air, air marshal. Okay. Sky Cop sounds so much cooler, but he's a, he's an air marshal. So he's always traveling all the time. And she said, Sabrina, the teenage witch is her comfort show. She puts it on when she's alone in the house and, and mm -hmm. like goes to sleep to it and everything. Yeah. So many people do that. And, and it's just everywhere in the world. I was making a movie in Cairo and I was walking down the street with my bodyguard. You didn't go anywhere without your bodyguard the whole time mm -hmm. I was there. And I see this gaggle of women coming towards me and they've got the robes on and the, the whole nine yards. And I think, well, this is it. They're coming for me now. <laughs> and they, yeah, I don't have a robe on. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and they get to me and they just started kissing me, like kissing me and kissing me and petting me and kissing me. And we love you. We love you. We love you. And I was like, wow, That's it made incredible. it here. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, into it penetrated this Middle Eastern culture too. Yeah, which is just yeah. amazing. It's one know? of the. It's such a wholesome show, and also like even for the kind of, um, you know, kind of show it was, you guys still kept it like kind of edgy, like adult, and still yeah, like all the all the sophistication to it. You know, yeah, it's just like right. You know? Yeah, and, exactly. And, you know, and I have girls tell me all the time, like, and Melissa teases me about this because it's always my booth at a, at a convention or whatever <laughs> that the, she's like, why has three people walked up to you and burst into tears? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault. They right. became a scientist because of me. Oh like, my she's God. Like, at, like this last one we did, she looks over and this kid walks into my booth and he goes, um, 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 and I'm like, what are you? Okay. And he's like, can I bring my girlfriend back in? I, 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 I need to propose to her. I was like, here right now? He's like, wow. Yeah. Is, is that okay? She loves you. I was like, yes, yes, that's okay. <laughs> Let his girlfriend in, please. So oh in she comes, God. and we're filming it for him. And Melissa's like, what now? I'm like, hey, Mary, get over here. So she like runs over, and we like, you know, give them big hugs and kisses, and it, tears were flowing. It was so sweet. Wow, that, is so that kind sweet. of stuff happens to me all the time. Yeah, um, I you know make what? people cry in a good way. <laughs> yeah, it, it really did. Like it's, I have, I have such fond memories of being like a certain age and watching those shows and looking forward to them. Especially like you guys had such great chemistry, and I, it's, it's, I always like appreciate good casting. And I don't know who, I don't know who did the casting or who found all of you guys, but like you and Caroline Ray and Melissa Joan, like it's, I'm stunned you guys aren't related. 
because right? you just seem well, to get along. Are. Well. I mean, I think we feel like we are. Oh, that's sweet. Point, you know, yeah. the three of us in particular are crazy close yeah. and always will be. And, you know, Nate and Jenna, there's a lot of us that just adore each other. But Caroline, you know, I'm always next to her doing something. They always put us together doing something. And it's just literally like butter. Like we're just so yeah. in tune Cohesive. with each other. You know? Was it was it cool to reprise? Was it weird to reprise the role in the other one without Melissa Joan Hart? Or did you guys have a blast like well, hanging out with other ants? There was no way to really to put Melissa in that one. Right. There really yeah. wasn't. If there had been, we probably would have said, come on, it's the Three Musketeers. Right. But there really wasn't any way to add her into the story. But it was, it was so funny because they were all freaking out because they all grew up watching it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. all the actors. And so we sat at the table read and I had the first line. And I said, Sabrina, is that you? And the whole place went crazy, like crazy. <laughs> like everybody went nuts, like for five minutes. Oh my it God. was so funny. Um, so no, we enjoyed it. I mean, mm. it was weird. That show was very dark and I do not, I, I am not, I do not gravitate to darkness. Um, wow. That's what that was a question I had for you actually because did you read the original comics before you were doing the the original part because it was a darker comic I feel yeah. like yeah then... it was no I didn't <laughs> <laughs> I just said if she's gonna be the sexy one because they put me in all the skin tight clothes and everything and, mm. and I said if she's gonna be the sexy one then I want her to be a scientist that's because there's that always somebody you're always either sexy or smart you're never both. Right. And, you know, the first 10 years of my career, you could put all my costumes in one drawer like, <laughs> Here, the and a gun. That's it. Like, that's what you get. Like, <laughs> so, like, I was like, I'm OK with all that. Right. I get it. But I wanted to be a scientist, you know, because yeah. I think that's a really important message to send girls. You can be both. Yeah attractive and, and the smart one you know and what was cool about that too is you uh, your character as a scientist still had room for error so even though everyone knew you were a scientist you were super smart you were also this powerful witch you still had like stuff that you were trying to figure out maybe mm -hmm. mistakes that you had made too so i think that that was a cool lesson to have yeah like, i remember learn. walking to the set like halfway through the first year and caroline goes you're a nerd aren't you and I was like, you just now figured that out? <laughs> you just got that, Memo? And she was a debutante. She's an athlete. She's like so strong and amazing. Mm -hmm. At one point, we had to race each other down a hallway. And Caroline's super competitive. She picked me up like sack of potatoes, one arm, <laughs> picked my whole body up, and just ran and put me behind her. I was like, what? Did you just sack of potatoes me? And she's like, oh, God, I did. I'm like, one arm. She picked me up and threw me like that way. I was like, oh, man, she's really strong. I tried oh to go back with her once. I lost 10 pounds. I was like, honey, I can't go with you. You're too strong for me. <laughs> oh, my God, that's hilarious. Did you ever, when you were starting out, did you ever dabble into stand up? Because I feel like a lot of people, like, would try to, actors would try to transition into stand up for a little bit, maybe to get their. There, yeah. or improv or no, anything I mean, like that you know i never did i, I i'm a storyteller mm. and i've done one woman shows and i could see myself doing that yeah like a, mm. a full narrative piece mm -hmm. but just but stand up mm, uh, I, don't, I just don't have that in me that's not in me i'm a nerd yeah <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, I'm a, i don't have that star thing in me like i don't have that i'm, oh. I'm a i'm a pro you I know, got gotcha. you. Yeah, pro, that's what I am. I don't. They. I only did whatever publicity they asked me to do. Nice. You know what I mean? Like I never did like excess. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. I was always just like happy to do whatever you need me to do. Then I'm gonna go home and make a soup life. Wow. You know, like that is like just was how I approached it, and I'm not sorry about that. No. Being a big star is hard work. I'm yeah. friends with some people who are huge stars, and it's it's. it's not it's, it's not as fun as it is it's cut out to be <laughs> grass is always greener right like grass right. is always greener when you when you're not the one mm -hmm. in those shoes yeah but it, 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 it they have they have zero privacy except behind the walls of their own home and even not there and you know right. what i mean 
Yeah. Yeah. And even with today's culture and stuff like that, it's amazing to me how little understanding of that these people are still people there is. Like, there seemed to be like, you know, when there was just tabloids that you had to read back in the day, you'd be mm -hmm. like, my God, why don't they leave these people alone? And now it's like even major new news organizations. It's like the the um, the Johnny Depp trial. That whole oh, thing oh is my like. God. I feel it's, sorry for both of them to be oh, Like, I don't insane. know how they ended up in that courtroom. They should have worked it out some other way. Any but, other way, you know, any other way, <laughs> yeah, that. because whoo, that was not good. No, no, but I felt sorry for them because people were just glued to it as if it was any of their business, yeah, exactly. You know, which it just isn't. I didn't watch a minute of it, it's none of my business what these people did in the bedroom or whatever. Like, I, I, I don't want to know personally, yeah. I know it is. It is very weird. I don't know. I don't know what it is, what the obsession is with people wanting to know every little detail. And then the mm -hmm. thing is, is like, not only do they want to know every detail, they also seem to want to then dictate what they should and shouldn't be doing. And it's like, God, like you go do your thing and everybody else will go do theirs mm -hmm. and it'll be fine at the end of the day. Nothing's yeah, going to yeah. change. Yeah. 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 It I is. I don't see any reason to be up in the Kool-Aid of all that, but it's not, yeah. but I'm a nerd. I like to write my columns and people read them like you know like everybody else is like snapping 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 the pictures and all that yeah. and i do try to keep up with that a little bit because i know the fans really appreciate it they really yeah. like it so yeah. i try but yeah it's a good balance it's you I've, I've seen your social your instagram you got a good balance of it i mean it seems like they get the fans get exactly what they want without getting too much into what you're really you know your personal life yeah yeah i i, I try to keep it that way but, Do you remember a point when you're like in time where like you felt secure as an actor, like where you were like, um, you know, just like in between just starting out, kind of coming into your own and, and, and getting good at what you're doing and then being like, oh, my God, I got it. I'm locked in. This feels great. Mm, I think. Yes, I think there was a time. That, you know, I, it took a minute for people to figure me out because I don't know if you remember, but I started out with red hair. Mm hmm. And uh, and this voice, right? So I was I was just really not an expected commodity. Like people were like, "Ooh, what's that? <laughs> like <laughs> why does it talk like that and have red hair?" Like they were just really they didn't know what to do. With me. And um, and so one year, I did eight network tests, and I don't know if your audience wow. knows what that's in, but lawyers are involved and deals are made, and you sign the rest seven next seven years of your life, and it's it's a really emotional, traumatic, dramatic thing to make a network deal for a show. Mm -hmm. I made eight and went and auditioned and didn't get them. Oh my God. Eight. So yeah. they sent me a ninth one and I said, no, I'm not coming. It mm -hmm. was CBS. I said, I've been in your hallway four times. Either give me a room with a cop or I'm not coming. Like I, I'm not going back. I'm just yeah. not. I'm going to New York. Everybody can kiss my ass. <laughs> and like so then I got a call from Linda Blubber Thompson and they wanted me to come read for their show to play the dumbest girl in Washington DC so I went and I sat with her and I said if you want somebody who can play the dumbest girl in DC you need to hire the smartest girl in Hollywood and that would be me and oh, she was man. like okay <laughs> and I was like uh and I'm not testing this is a straight offer. I'm not doing any of it. I'm not making a deal. Just call, tell them what you want to pay me, and we'll just take it from there. Wow. And it worked. And so that was kind of the moment when I said, okay, all y'all, we're going we're gonna to do this my way from now on. Like, mm -mm, not doing that. That's great. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, um, I'm still kind of known as a tough negotiator. A lot of times people are just like, oh, she'll never do it, which sometimes I would. Mm -hmm. You need to ask me the right way. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, um, it was just, that was when I was like, okay, this is how I'm, I'm in charge. I have to be in charge right. of my career. Like people can advise you and whatever else, but at the end of the day, you're the one that walks into that room. You're the one that, you know, has to walk onto those stages and sets day in and day out and so yeah. you got to figure out you got to tell people how you want them to treat you and how you want to be seen that's you great know? advice i wish i had i wish i had talked to you when i was younger that would that would have been great i feel like i wasted a lot of time <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It it's a hard to thing get there. it really does you know yeah. 
But you're at the age where, you know, it's time to have complete and utter ownership of how your body moves through time and space, no matter what is at stake, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I completely agree. Uh, were there avenues where like, you know, cause I know you would, you'd said you didn't like the darker stuff, but I kind of find it funny because you were in supernatural, you were in lost. It seems like you're almost attracted. You were in the, um, Oh my God. It was like a, an homage to, uh, um, I'm blanking on the name. This is going to kill me. The uh, Slasher Beach kind of films. Oh, um, Psycho Beach Party? Psycho Beach Party, yeah. yeah. I, that was a, a, a friend of my managers loved that movie. I it's remember, a hilarious movie. It's so I, good. I did another movie with that guy. Bob uh, Bob King was a director called Bad Actress, which oh I yeah, the title role, which you know you have to be kind of brave to do. I was like, Absolutely. Yeah. Take a shot. Go ahead. I'm playing yeah. the bad actress. But, you know... Um, <laughs> That's just that sense of humor. Just uh, I'm so drawn to it. Yeah. Well, I do tons of drama. I just did mm -hmm. the Love and Death. I just did One True Love. So all these things are dramas. Yeah. And I don't mind going there, mm -hmm. but I have a, a b very buoyant spirit. So like yeah. everybody's like, why are you always so positive? You know, I'm like, <laughs> I, I don't know. That's just how I roll. <laughs> like yeah things are hard they're gonna get better here's what we need to do you know what yeah. i mean like, i i always feel like no matter how bleak things are there's a flip side to that mm -hmm. and, yeah. you, and that's what we need to keep looking for you know i feel like you have the perfect balance of like work ethic and also people who want to be around you and like you what you just described i'm like i want to work with you like <laughs> <laughs> i want to be on set with somebody like that all day long that's fucking awesome People do like working with me. I mean, I mm. think it's one of the reasons that I work so much yeah. at my age because a lot of actresses my age can be a bit difficult mm. because they're not playing the parts they used to play. They're not, you know, they're not number two on the call sheet. Right. They're number six or seven, you know, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and that is uh, an adjustment. Yeah. But for me, like, the leading ladies on a show, I'm there to protect them, to be their spirit guide. I'm there to make them the best they can possibly be. Because you know what? I was all that in a bag of chips once too. And I was that part. I played those parts. And I was grateful to be there. And I know they are. Right. And I'm. It's my job is to make them look good. Nice. You know? But I, I feel like your energy isn't, like, even when you were in that part, probably wasn't a... There was no negative aura about you. It was probably always a very like positive, welcoming. I think I don't. I wasn't there, no, so I don't know. I'm the <laughs> pro girl. Like my agents have never, ever, ever had a phone call from me from a set. That's never. great. Wow, that's in awesome. In 35 years, they've never had a call about there's a problem or I'm. You know, I mean, sure, there have been terrible things that happen. Sometimes people can be awful, but yeah, I manage. I just manage to 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 work through it. You know. There's always the actress that's mad because you're thinner or, blah, 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 blah. you know, and I just find ways to let them know that I'm on their side and that mm. we're going to get through this and it's going to be great. And, you know, it, I, I, I manage that kind of stuff yeah. on my own. I never like, I, I'm just a pro. I'm not a star. I'm right, just right. a pro. I don't have any of that star energy. Yeah. You have the star energy, but you have the discipline to like, keep yourself in check as opposed to needing somebody else to push you back. I feel like, no, don't you? Well, feel like I think also, and this is really important. Acting is not my only identity. Mm -hmm. You know, it yeah. just isn't. I identify as a writer. I identify as a, as a, as a chef, I identify as a friend and an auntie and <laughs> a, you know, a pet lover and a, and a, a you know, fanatical walker you know? <laughs> <laughs> i don't just identify that if my career ended tomorrow i would still feel really good about myself that's great i that would be a, a happy be. camper so and i've always felt that way i've always felt like you know my life is so multi-dimensional and you know i've also done tons of social service delivery work in my life you know i founded the second aids program in the country in 1984 right i want to talk about your activism yeah. And I still work with the Good Shepherd Home for Bad Women. And, I, you know, so like that, all those things, those aspects of my life are really fulfilling and, 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 and honestly defining for me. Mm. You know, I always tell people I'm not the prettiest lady in the world and I'm not the most talented, 
but I have a strong character as a human. And I think that that's, that's what I want to share when I'm acting. You know what I mean? That's what, that's what I'm out there to do. Yeah. And I feel like the combination of all that, like you can see that and read that in your writing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Everything that you've written over the years, it kind of culminates into the wisdom that you have and you kind of partake in other people when you're communicating with them through your writing. Yeah. Thank you. I hope so. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you feel like there's some barriers being broken as far as maybe any kind of stigma in acting for for women of a certain age, that kind of a thing? And do you feel like, I mean, you obviously have helped. Barriers are fully in place. (laughs) I I, I wanted to get your take on the optimism of it, but do you think there's still kind of. Oh, my God. No, it's dreadful. The way people treat you, especially the young ones and Mm. the crews. Every time I pull up to a set, they see the silver in my hair and the little PAs run, run towards me and go. Oh, no, 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 ma'am. The extras don't park here. Like, wow. Every single time I go to work. Wow. That that is oh, my so God. shitty. And oh. I'm just like, okay, young man. Well, <laughs> I think you need to check the call sheet. And maybe here's a suggestion. Google. Google. <laughs> Use the Google. You know how. You're young. <laughs> it takes two seconds. That's but, great. Yeah, but so there's all of that. You know, um, I'm going to make you a shirt that says, please Google before you approach me. Right. Google. I mean, that's... honestly, that's good advice for anybody out there who's a producer mm. on a film or a TV series. Mm. Make your crew Google the cast before mm. they start to work with them, because especially some of these young people. Yeah. Oblivious. They're oblivious. You know, to. But, I but had I think... a hairdresser not too long ago, and she, it was an awful experience. She, I sat in her chair and she said, oh, I can't believe I have to do you too. Oh my God. Only one person. And I was like. Yeah. It's kind of like, one, one it's just like, do your, do your and job. I like shit the whole movie because she was just so <laughs> terrible. Oh my oh, God. Well. That so is brutal. racism is still alive and well in, in a big way in my industry. That's but, unbelievable. But you know, you can let that upset you or you can just say. So fucking what? Like I don't care. Yeah, like, but I, what's... Care. I can write. If y'all y'all are gonna treat me badly, I'll just go home. I take yeah. my, little, my little pad and paper and go the fuck home. Like, that is I, such. I, don't, I just don't have any patience for that. That is such know? great leverage to have other tools in your. Uh, a friend of mine, when I started doing stand up, always used to talk to me about tools in your tool belt, and if, mm. if you're a creative, how you can do like you should always, because that's what I've always had. I've always I I you know, I could draw for the longest time and I've had drawings and publications, stuff like that. And I could kind of mm-hmm. use my sense of humor to do that kind of stuff. But like, I always feel like that when I go on auditions anyway, I go, you know what, if I don't get this thing or if this thing doesn't work out, I still know how to write a joke. I still know That's how to tell great. a joke. I don't, fi- and it, but it really is great leverage because it's just in the back of your head. You don't have to flaunt it, but it's, mm-hmm. it's there. And I think well, and I tell people too, um, when you get older, like this is just the deal. I mean, I've literally had casting directors say to my agents, well, she can't expect to get paid like she used to. She's quite old. Oh, you know, like, God. so like they, they say things like that. Right. Mm. And so, you know, the important thing is to number one, not be defined by it. And number two, as you get older to need less, hmm. learn to need less. If That's you need advice. less, then you don't have to make as much. And you can do what you want to do when you want to do it. And so, you know, that's a really big, big, big part of it is Mm -hmm. like, I'm selling my house. I'm actually moving back to LA. Oh, nice. Um, And for a lot of reasons, but um, one of them is I don't want to take care of a big giant house anymore. (laughs) It's just too much for me. Yeah. I'd rather do Pilates and write a column. You know what I mean? Then, then work for a whole day in the garden and the, 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 it's just, right. just, it's just getting the better of me. Yeah. But you know, I told my manager, I was like, just for the record, I am not coming back hungry. I am not hungry. I'm still only going to do what I want to do. And if I feel like passing, I'm going to pass. Nice. You know? Mm. And so that, that is a good position to be in. Mm. And, Absolutely. and the way to get there is to, need less when less. when you were talking earlier about your your uh much to your parents chagrin kind of going into acting stuff like that did they did you did you kind of get to show them though that you were fine you were secure did they get to see you 
Like, oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, That's darling. good. They were dazzled and thrilled by the whole. Situation. Oh good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it really, honestly, I turned out to be the most stable earner in the whole family over time. Oh, that's got to feel great. You know, I've been so, so well employed for so long. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. always working. And even people yeah. are always like, oh, my God, you're always working. And that is not a common thing for a lot of women my age. A lot of them don't, they're not allowed out of the house, you know. Like, mm. so I, I'm grateful for the invitation to participate. But, um, but I don't, I don't have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And that's a really liberating thing. And that's, but my parents know they enjoy my career. They, my mom has passed my dad. Mm -hmm. I just wrote, if you get a chance, read bucket case about a, my bucket list tri trip with my dad. Oh, so I will. Fun. Oh, I'm dying. I'm all about a bucket list. <laughs> yeah. He's the, he's I, a I really king of bucket list. You know, he's 90 and he's blind and he has a resting heart rate of 38 oh, and he wanted goodness. to travel. And I was like, well, then we shall. Oh, you know, nice. it, was, it, took a, it took me in a village to get it. <laughs> Wait, why isn't that a movie? Right, right. Yeah, that needs to be a movie. Well, you got to read it, Bucket Case. It's really a fun piece. Uh, but my I'm dad gets read. a huge kick out of me being famous. And and my mom, you know, she used to come to the sets and be like, I can't believe it takes 400 people to make this stupid thing. It's <laughs> dumb. Cat talks. And I mean, my mom was so, like, <laughs> it was a chain smoker, like, like, uh, uh, like as positive as I am, that's how negative my mother was. Just like, <laughs> that doesn't make any fucking sense to me at all. Like, yeah, are you, are you the type of actor that to, to kind of take little bits and pieces from the people in your life and kind of incorporate them into each character? Oh yeah. Oh, that's oh, yeah. Who would you say most inspired, like your a favorite character of yours? My ex-husband's mom was definitely in, in uh, I've played her a few times. <laughs> <laughs> that's so great um because she's a character and a half yeah you know she had that voice oh and, really you know at, at the my wedding you know my 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 brother and and my older sister uh are kind of heavy set mm -hmm. and uh uh gay nail walked up to me that's her name gay nail wow she walked up to me and she said well Beth, you have a large family and i do mean large <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> wow! I mean, just that, just that's her. Right? Oh, that's great. So yeah. I've gotten to play her a few times. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, do you think? Do you have any interest in like? Because I know reboots are like a huge thing. Do you do you kind of like that kind of thing? Like, would you would you do a reboot of Sabrina, or do you think? You know what's done is done, and you'd rather let it because uh, they're everywhere now. Everybody, every eighty sitcom star. Yeah, I don't know that they're all working out as well. No, as, they're not. No, I don't think they are. I am not occurring. Like I have no interest in watching anything like that. Right. Uh, yeah. uh, in gen, you know, like I don't have that much time. I'm gonna watch something new. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Like I already saw that. Why would I watch yeah. it again? Oh, I agree. Um, I got to ask you, because we talked about it at the very beginning, I said it. Did you understand Top Gun when it first came out? No. I, I, I mean, I don't understand anything. <laughs> like, I was trying to sit through The Matrix like five times. I'm like, uh, okay, whatever the fuck is going on in this movie, it's, it's way out of my league. Like, I cannot do it. I had, a, I had a hard time with Ocean's Eleven. I was like, who's that? What's that? What's going on? Like, I do really a lot better with, like, Disney films. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, that's Beauty yeah. and the Beast, that's my speed. That's, that's a great. good... I can follow it. I know what's going on. I you and my mother would get along well. At all. I watched an episode of The Sopranos once when my husband was out of town. Ooh. And I did not sleep for eight days. Like, <laughs> the violence, I was like... Like, no, people have to go to the movie first and say, Beth, you can go. <laughs> Amazing. Well, Beth, you can't go. And nine out, nine out of ten times, are like, you can't go. Don't oh, wow. Don't even try that's funny because the Sopranos are my comfort show. Like other people really? disagree with teenage wit. Yeah, I can go to bed to it with no problem. My yeah. wife hates it. Can't do it. I can't he do said he said that before, yeah. and it's I'm just like stunned because like I wouldn't be able to sleep through the gunshots and all the other shit that's going on in that film. Like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> he just has Serpico on a loop on headset when he goes to sleep, and he's just that's like, why I do so well with John. He looks like Serpico. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to lull you to I'm sleep. Like right? Yes. <laughs> um, what, what was it like working with uh, Jesse Plemons and Elizabeth Olsen? Well, butter. They're both beautiful actors, and mm. they are both very, very, 
down to earth. And nice. they both grew up watching my show too. So. Yeah, I was gonna say they're they they're that same was. age. Yeah, they were not running towards my car screaming the extras go that way. Like no, um, <laughs> I really loved um, working with both of them. You know, and 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 I'm the mom. Mm -hmm. And these days, in that role, for someone my age, there is um, very little to do. Um, and so, you know, the the dad it, it has also very little to do, but they let him answer the phone. Like, the mom, <laughs> no. No, no, no. The mom that you put on a dress and you weep at the funeral or whatever, but you don't answer the phone. Mm -hmm. no, you're not involved in the plot in any way, shape, or form. Um, mm. And, you know, I just thought it was such a good project. Yeah. And it's my job, and it's a hard job, to make that mom come to life, fully to life, mm -hmm. and to give her a point of view and and a, and ground her in something real, you know. And the producers came up to me at the end of it, and they were like, you know, we're giving you a raise. I was like, seriously? Wow. Why? <laughs> They're like, it's just you know, we just what you did really made the whole thing work, and. You know, so that that kind of thing is really nice. Yeah, that really surprised me. I was like, "That's what? incredible. That's a don't that's tell awesome." Me. I, I shouldn't have told on them. <laughs> well, from what you, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, from what no, but from what you just you know said everything too, it's not surprising. I mean, that's that's phenomenal. Do you ever have trouble shaking a character no. after you played one for a while? No. I see. I read these things sometimes about these method actors, and I'm just like, that seems a little crazy. But I mean, maybe it helps. I don't know. I'm not that. I'm pretty fluid. That's cool. You know, I make some choices. I know where I want to be. I have, thank God, I have really instant access to my emotional life. Mm. So if there are tears or laughter or anything like that, I have access to that. Nice. In my body. You know? I always had trouble. I, I took a, a I'm I'm first of all, I'm a comedian, so notoriously bad actor. But like I, you know, I try I'm hoping somebody will make a mistake and cast me in something and be like, what the <laughs> fuck do we do? And I'll be like, too late. I've already got the check. Uh, <laughs> get out of there. But uh, I did take a, um, a Meisner uh, course for a while. I had I did have a hard time trying to like tap into stuff where I'm pretty sure my entire class thought I was dead inside. <laughs> uh, they were like, you can't draw from you anything. Know, and there I'm are like, actors like that too. There are good actors who really struggle with that, who really don't have that kind of that's accent. That's nice to hear. You know, <laughs> but I, I envy people. Who photographic can. memory. So yeah. memorizing lines is easy for me, but some of the best actors I've ever worked with struggled mightily with that, you know? Yeah. So everybody's different. Everybody's brain works differently. Right. You know? I want to ask, I want to ask you about skipping a great like being a 15 when you were a senior. How did you did you was that something that you would like kind of like realize and thought was super awesome? Did you did you struggle in school because of it? How was your social life? Well, oh my god. First of all, my parents. So first of all, <laughs> when I was a kid, the nursery schools were like this fucking kid is impossible. Like she just can't do it. Like just take her back. Like we can't do it. She needs she needs more. Wow. So my father was a hospital administrator, so he forged a birth certificate, and they put me in kindergarten. Oh, my God. That's wow. awesome. Yeah. So I was in kindergarten, but I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So we celebrated my birthday on November 24th. So then I get to, you no, know, it was seventh grade or eighth grade. But I, I staged a protest and refused to um, say the Pledge of Allegiance until we withdrew from Vietnam. Oh my God, and I love you. That's I amazing. got into a lot of trouble. And wow. they were like, it would just be better if you went to high school. So <laughs> so then they just were like, it would be so much better if you weren't here. Like every school was just like, here's what would be good if you weren't here. That would be good. <laughs> uh, like, so, so I'm in fucking high school and I'm 13 and, I'm, and everybody else, so much, and my parents go, well, we have to tell you something. You're not 13. You're 12, and your birthday's really in February. And I was like, "Are you kidding? What?" <laughs> My head like exploded. I was like, "I'm 12. I'm fucking 12." 
<laughs> like, oh what? my god. Yeah. Wow. And then I took courses at the local junior college while I was in high school, so I could get out early. So, oh, so wow. th- you know, I just was one of those people, and and I was really. I was the first teen chapter of the National Organization for Women. I was a mobilization for survivors, licking envelopes, you know, anti-nuke movement. I was like, nice. I was very involved in, 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 you know, bringing donuts to the teacher protests. And, you know, like, I was like, just, yeah. And, and my mom started buying me cigarettes when I was like 11. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, and actually so, 10. I mean, she all the cigarettes. My mom was like, cigarettes for everyone. And so, like, <laughs> they would call her from the school, and they would say, well, she skipped class again, and we caught her smoking. And mom would be like, well, I don't know what you want me to do about it. Stop calling me. And so, like, so they, the schools had no recourse with me. There was wow. nothing they could do because my parents were like, you work yeah. Like, we have to live with her at home. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. We're not, you know, we're not touching it. That's incredible. So, like everybody um, was just happy to see me go. <laughs> <laughs> True. Oh but, my god! You know, those skills came in handy later when I became an organizer and and somebody who you know had to go out in very difficult times, uh, like especially during the AIDS movement and yeah, when people when there was so much fear and so much prejudice and so much. And and I and I could go out and fight that because I'd just been weird all my life. So I was like, well, weird again. Yeah. We that's <laughs> yeah. When you're weird, you're awesome. old, you know, what are you going to do? Absolutely. Yeah, I love the activism side. We've had a lot of uh, guests on the show who are actors slash uh, we had Mike Farrell on. Um, mm-hmm. Ed I love Bagley. Mike. Yeah, he's great. And Ed Bagley. I remember re- so that's another thing, too. I remember reading all your articles in the Huffington Post. I remember reading his stuff. I remember seeing them when I was in high school on TV, mm-hmm. like all you guys kind of doing your thing. And it was great. And it's I have so one one elementary school story. It's not even a story. But my friends always ask or people always ask if I was always a pain in the ass because I'm very vocal. I'm If you follow me, so you probably see my nonsense that's about guns and all that other stuff constantly mm-hmm. 24 hour posting. But um, they're like, were you always as much of a pain in the ass when I was a kid? Uh, I marched everybody in my elementary school into my principal's office because they weren't giving us enough time at re- they were splitting up our lunch time and recess time. So if you didn't finish lunch mm. in, in time, you didn't get to go play. But some kids ate slower than others, yada, yada, and I thought it was unfair. And I dragged everybody in the principal's office. And they were just like, I fucking hate this kid. <laughs> like, get him out. Like, they didn't move me up, but they were basically like, oh, I cannot wait. Till he yeah. gets hit by Yeah, so you were like me. They were, they were just <laughs> school persona non grata, you know. But yeah. I was just trying Which to make point? everything fair. I mean, I was just yeah. like, but yeah, I had a... Um, Where do you think that comes from, that sense to fight injustice? I don't know. But I think, you know, as you might imagine from the cigarette story, my background is pretty complicated. Mm, um, yeah. And there's two ways to go when you come from that, mm-hmm. right? You either go to self pity, which is will kill you. Self pity will kill you. Yeah. Yeah. Or you go as an empath, and you move toward protecting others. And wow. so I'm a protector of others. You know what I mean? Like. like even like Jesse Flemons was trying to do his close up, and some guy was, over, and I just walked over and said, "I need you to stop that. He's doing his close up, hmm. and I want you to know that they already got your shot, and you were great. That you're going to be quiet, and you're going to not move while he does his close up." And Jesse was like, "You know, like, cause he like he yeah. didn't want to say anything, but I was like, oh no, mama, mama doesn't, no, no, mama will take care of that." No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I seriously, that is so nice because I've I've known people like that, and that, that you just there's not enough of you mm. to go around. But it's when you're around somebody who's like that, you're like, oh my god, I feel good. I feel like I'm in good hands. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it's yeah, so I'm nice. that person. I'm that person who will who is pretty fearless when it comes to that. Beautiful. You know, just walked right into buildings and said, I work with people with AIDS, and I need you to listen to me. Here's what I need you to do. You know, like I mm-hmm. like. That's, 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 that's how I roll. <laughs> awesome. 
That's um, great. I, I have a question. So now you are such a positive. What was your favorite Disney movie? Because I feel like you are like a Disney ca- like character where you're like <laughs> fighting for the weaker. And what is your number one film? Like what oh, would be the God, one? God, I love so many of them. Uh, I, 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 I The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Wow. Oh, that's an underrated one. I tried out for the Prince Phoebus. I was going to go to Disney World when I was like 18 years old. How sick is that? That's, that's a crazy. Fact, that that's great. I've heard. I know. I've never <laughs> heard this at all. I was like, what are you talking about? You know what's funny? You I must made it. It. If you haven't seen it, it's a, such a beautifully made film. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. really special. Everybody's I mean, great. So man. many of them are special, but it, it's just gorgeous. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, that's a good. Uh, no, I, I think that that's a very cool one because no one's ever really ever said like Hunchback of Notre Dame. I feel like that one gets left on the table a lot. <laughs> that yeah. one and, and Up was really wonderful. Oh, fucking Up! Right? We up was we had Ed Asner on, and before he, uh, obviously before he, I don't know why I always say before he passed. <laughs> if anybody's gonna be shocked that I didn't. Yeah. I know I look like a necromancer, but I'm not raising anybody from the. <laughs> Um, but yeah, he, uh, he talked about, uh, the experience on up and everything and just, uh, you know, I, I mean, it had me in t- five, five, first five minutes of that movie. I cannot yeah. not cry. Oh my God. I love him so much. I mean, he's a friend of mine, old friend of mine. Hmm. And, um, and I know his son. Oh, um, great people. I used to call him Ed, Ed Bunyan head. I could get Ed to do anything. <laughs> I'd be like, Ed, Ed Bunyan head. I need you to do this for me. He'd be like, God damn it. <laughs> Oh. He did it every time. Like you, he was such a softy. He tried to be gruff, but he was hopelessly soft. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be talked into anything. He so I mean when I I'd had Mike uh, Farrell on before I had Ed Asner on, and Mike told me to say hi to Ed because they're old friends too. You know that they, they would get together a lot. So I was like, great. So we have Ed backstage, and I'm like, hey, I'm Mike. Said hi, but I'll say it on air too. You know, whatever, blah blah blah. And he's like, I love Mike, blah blah blah. You know, like the whole thing. And then when we got on air, I was like, hey, oh, by the way, you know, we had Mike Farrell on the show. And it just goes, fuck him. <laughs> I was like, what, what just happened? And he was great. He was so funny. He's a hoot. I mean, yeah. I loved him so much. He was really fun. Yeah, he was amazing. Um, well, I want to I have George, to ask George, you. The, you know, do you remember the actor George Gaines? Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. The white eyebrows and the white hair from Police Academy. Yep. So I was working with him on a show, and it was almost impossible to work with him because he's the funniest human that ever lived. And wow. I would I would just have, like, clipboards in front of my face because I couldn't get through the scene without laughing. Mm. I mean, he was just so damn funny. And he showed up at work one day, and I go, George, how are you? And he goes, well, ah, my uncle committed suicide. We had to clean it up all weekend. And I was like, oh, my God, George, I'm so sorry. And he goes, oh, no, he was 104. We all do it. We get in the bathtub with a gun. Everybody knows the drill. I, I was like, what? He's like, we live too long. We, we never die. My, we don't die. We just have to take it into our own hands at some point. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. I was like, oh. You're so like, M- Mazel Tov? <laughs> oh, no, he had to do it. it was a yeah, yeah. Door. No other way. Oh, <laughs> hilarious. They have a pack that they all get in the bathtub when they do it. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's funny. I that guess it's just... being nice, so it's easier to clean. Like, yeah. <laughs> wipe it down. Hey, just plug the drain, pull Less the drain. destruction of property. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that is very, I never thought about that. A very thoughtful suicide, though. You know, I don't want to make a mess. <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic! I, I have to ask you the bit with this. I want to thank you so much for coming on because this has been a blast, and it's already been over an hour. So thank you. Oh, um, my pleasure. And I got to ask you the big three questions that we ask every guest okay. to come on the show. Um, and t- you can take your time with these two. But first question is: uh, If you can go back in time and talk to your younger self, what piece of advice would you give yourself to help you today? Hmm. I would probably, well, hmm. I guess I would just say uh, perfection is overrated. Nice. And being right is overrated. So if you can remember those two things, you have a much easier life. Very nice. 
Uh, really second question advice. is, what had to end in your life, good or bad, that led you to where you are today? Hmm. What had to end? I don't know if anything ever ended. Hmm. I guess when my first marriage ended, which really was hard for me because I, I it felt like failure and I'm perfect, you know, of course. <laughs> and, um, and so it felt like the, like I had failed and like everything was just wrong and I did everything wrong and why didn't, and then, uh, and then I survived and then I was fine. And once that happened, I was like, Oh, well, that was kind of really one of the worst things that could happen and I'm fine. Yeah. So let's just roll with that. <laughs> it yeah. changed. It changed a lot for me, actually. Yeah. Because, you know, I really, my second husband, I was, I'm still very close to, but I really, um, I didn't marry the first time till I was 38. I really wasn't the marrying kind. Understandable. I get it. I'm not in mean? my 40s. I'm, I'm yeah. And I probably will never get married. So there we go. Yeah, I just <laughs> wasn't the marrying kind. I finally was like, oh, crap, I better do this before my tits fall off. I was like, I really <laughs> wanted to have a child. So, like, I I, I, I got on with it, and and, and, and it, it wasn't for me. It just didn't wow. work. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, it, it, it still can be it, – it, this show business is a stressor on relationships. As yes. you both know, for sure. and um, and in my generation, it's still a big problem if the woman is more successful than the man. That Oof. is still a, uh, right, not well received. <laughs> right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is amazing. It's uh, it seems like such a really juvenile thing to still be happening, but it, I have friends who so have dealt with the same shit. Yeah, yeah, and it's a bummer. So yeah, it just is what that is what it is, you know. Yeah. Well, we're seeing this whole big push pull in the society at large, right? Between yep. like, wait yeah. a minute, I was in charge, I had everything, it was my show. Yeah. Like, what are all these people of color and women doing here? You know, so that yep. there's a, you know, that is not a uncommon sentiment. So right. it's not, really not surprising. Although I think the younger kids are doing better with it. Yeah, I mean, even even people, yeah, like I think we're my generation's considered elder millennials, which is mm -hmm. weird because I feel like I should be in like a robe and a fucking cloak and have meetings at night. Right, with right. <laughs> I got, I don't know when they call us that. I was like, oh shit, should I be doing? I'm late to the meetings. Um, but uh, yeah, they do. They seem to handle it way better than even any of us did, which is which is great. Um, they seem to be rolling with it. I think that'll all pan out though too, because we're gonna see where that leads. Because yeah, there's. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. still earlier on. So, the, yeah, they're dealing with it better. But you, I feel like people show more as time goes. Mm -hmm. So, like, you don't have, there's no negative bitter taste in anybody while they're super young. And then <laughs> I love that Tom's funny. like, they'll get their <laughs> comeuppance. <laughs> get, get yeah, yeah. There. Just wait until they get, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, so, the, and the third question, though, is uh, if this is a genuine dystopia, it's my favorite question because it's just goofy. This is a genuine dystopia and it was, uh aliens or zombies or a climate change or a meteor hitting the earth it's everybody's last day uh how would you want to go out what would be your epic uh death way to go last day on earth for everybody what are you doing mm. and how are you how are you how is it gonna be oh i'd sure like to be in the ocean just like to float right out there and Ooh, we never had that one I have a big wave just take me out yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> love it. That was a great one. That was a great one. Yeah, we've never had that. I'm a Pisces. I love the water. Let's put oh, me in the nice. water. Kill me there. Oh, that's right. You're February. Pisces. Because when you said November 24th, I was like, November 28th, Sagittarius. But then yeah, I forgot. Yeah, I was a Sagittarius. I was a super good one. Yeah. And then they like, <laughs> over. And that's then so like, no, you're a Pisces. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. Did you feel tricked? Like when you found out your birthday was totally in a different. Was it like was rocking? So, you, you know what it's like to be in high school, or already the youngest one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now I'm younger by miles. Yeah. And you know, oh, now I'm never gonna drive a car. Just never. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, and you're just like, oh, this is the worst thing ever. Yeah. Oh, I was so mad. Oh so my crazy. god. 
That is wild. Yeah. Um, well, I want to thank you so much for coming on. I hope you uh, had a good time. My pleasure. So great to spend time with you guys. Thank you. Thank you for asking me. Yeah. Oh, well. no, absolutely. Come back anytime. Okay. Absolutely. And, and hopefully we can get Caroline and I on together. Oh, I will. Absolutely. It'll chaos, but it'll be fun. Oh, yeah. I would love that. <laughs> be a lot of fun. Thank you so much. <laughs> Take right, care. Nice again. Peace. Bye. Good Bye-bye. 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 Dystopia tonight.